Cumbia. Ya estando la música ya, ya empieza. Cumbia. Cumbia. You ready? Yeah, what, what do you mean? <laughs> we didn't already start? Yeah, we're starting. She said, five, four, three, two, one, you're supposed to go. What's up, guys? I love Michelada Show here. We have today with us an amazing person, one of my favorite people in LA. There's someone else here besides me? Yeah, yeah, he's actually about to come in. <laughs> we have Zach Brooks, Mr. Midtown Lunch himself. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I think I've met you a few times before. Once or twice. Once or twice. Spent a little time together. <laughs> How would you describe your, your, yourself? How would I describe myself? Yeah, like what's your what's your your, your titles? Is what are this, your titles? You want to get to you want to get depressing? <laughs> oh, you mean oh, oh, oh you mean uh, like how do you, what, what do you introduce I thought this yourself? was going to be therapy. Like, uh, are you? Do you introduce like, yourself? How do you describe yourself? Do you see yourself as handsome, <laughs> ugly, well, that's a fat, yes. skinny, very handsome? Uh, how did I am the general manager of Smorgasburg, Los Angeles? Smorgasburg. That's what you want to know. That one. Yeah. Do you, do you still introduce yourself as like a food writer? Food critic. I, I, I say. Food lover. I say that I used to be a food writer. You have to put the question mark at the end. <laughs> I feel like as time goes on, I might call myself that, but I don't know if I deserve it. Not you, like a real writer. You still. I mean, you're still dabble in. So the year was 2006, <laughs> and blogging was this new thing. Your dog is. She's a therapy dog. Yeah. She's a, she's a co-host. Do, I, then I definitely need. I need. <laughs> she's a co-host. Um, no, I mean like you know I. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah. She's not gonna what stop. Is, what, does want, what does she want me to do? She just like, wants you. To, she just wants her? you to touch her. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, I can't like, give up. I'm like, it's gonna be a fight between me and the dog. Like, no, I'm putting my arm here. This is comfortable yeah. for me. There we go. Did I win? I think I won. Maybe she'll she'll do it again. What's she doing? What's she doing? She's judging you. I don't want to look at her. <laughs> I think I won. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> <she's>, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I so I started a food blog. I used to work in radio, like when um, that was my career. Uh, you, here. you started in Boston. So I started in Boston at this indie rock station called uh, WFNX, mm -hmm. which was like an old school alternative rock station. We were the first station in the country to play Nirvana, like oh, that, damn. yeah, like that kind of stuff. And then um, I ended up moving to LA for a couple years in two thousand and three, two thousand four, mm -hmm. and went to work for a station called Indie One Hundred Three. Rest in peace. Great station. <laughs> uh, probably the best radio job I ever had. Um, and then I moved to New York to work for Sirius Satellite Radio. What year was that? Um, that was 2005, 2006. Pretty early in the Sirius. there. Yeah. It was before they merged with XM. Okay. And But it was after, like, Howard Stern was there and, you know, whatever. And so when I was there, Sirius's offices were in Midtown, mm -hmm. which is... Um, a notoriously terrible place to eat um, and I started a food blog called Midtown Lunch to find the places in Midtown that were worth, worth eating at so like to sort of say don't eat at the you know soup and sandwich and salad place that was downstairs from your office mm -hmm. and just travel like a few blocks an over. extra block out of your way go down a weird alley what's that jonathan gold quote where he says the best food is always five minutes away from where you're willing to travel to that's i mean it that's was the and in new york it's not even five minutes like it's literally like people don't go more than a block from their office mm -hmm. because there's so many options but most of them are you know, and if you were willing to literally walk five minutes away from your office, which most people did not do, um, you could find pretty much any kind of food you wanted. And there was some amazing, like, little hidden gems. Some of them, like, literally hidden. Like, you know, if you imagine all the buildings in Manhattan, mm -hmm. I remember finding this, like, um, Ecuadorian restaurant. Well, it wasn't a restaurant. It was this guy that was in a little window down the hallway of an elevator. Like, you would go, there was this like, um, what are they, like a service entrance. Yeah. There was an entrance to the service elevator. Like this this weird, this door opened, and it was like kind of, you would have to go down the hallway, and before you got to the service elevator where people made deliveries, like there was this guy in a window selling Ecuadorian food. Did he have and a kitchen was, in there? Or like Yeah, yeah, like it was like a tiny little window, kitchen behind him, you know, and he served, uh, wait, was it, was it Ecuadorian food or Peruvian food? Food. It might have been Peruvian food. That's one of my favorite. It was foods. like, um, but like it was, um, it was, uh, he did like green spaghetti oh, and yeah. like, um, I think it was Ecuadorian. And 
it was amazing. And most people, you know, he was there because he served the community. Like there were people there who wanted yeah. to eat that food for sure. And certainly the people who were like, going to the service elevator, yeah. like to take, you know what I mean? But like office workers, you know, guys in suits weren't gonna like wander down some like. But you were. But I, right, so I found all those places, wrote about them, and it became a huge thing, like the blog, because there's so many people in Midtown and everybody's looking for decent lunch. And but how, and where did your love for food come from? Were you always into food? Or like, is it kind of like a, a, like a from childhood kind of thing? Yeah, like for in sure. College? I've always, no, no, I've always loved eating. Yeah, I mean, like my dad, my parents separated when I was eight. Mm -hmm. And so, but my dad, he would come and take us out to dinner every Tuesday and Thursday night. Oh. And then on Saturdays, we'd go out to eat, go to a movie, video games or whatever. And then every other weekend, we'd spend the night with him. My dad loved eating. And that was what we did with my dad. Like, was your dad always, like a food snob kind of person? No, no, like... no, no, no. And we would always go out to eat. Yeah. Like my dad just liked eating. He was in the army. Um, and so he was in... Uh, he had spent time in Vietnam. He spent time in Korea. Oh, okay, so he, so he, he loved yeah. all the he loved all that food. You know, we would go to like Greek festivals. I grew up in Miami, so we'd eat a lot of Cuban food, like you know, Dominican food, Salvadorian food, like, and you know, we would go to all those places, yeah. um, street fairs like Calle Ocho, like. You know, that's, that's my Spanish. So. <laughs> that's a sample. I, I've been told I speak uh, Cuban Spanish <laughs> by people here in LA. Um, probably less so now. Huh? You've probably been here less so, so now. I've definitely. Well, no, I don't. I think I've. I yeah. I am not a good. Uh, I'm not. Uh, my Spanish is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I do know what buen provecho means. Buen provecho. I didn't know that when I moved here. Really? I was like, uh, yeah, no. I was like, ¿Qué pasa, chico? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, so yeah. Know, like, yeah uh, you, can't, you can't be talking And people like were that. like, what are you talking about? Like, ¿Qué pasa, papi? Know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then people would be like, and then I'd eat lunch, because Indie 103 was owned by, is was owned by Entrevision, which was a Spanish language radio station. Yeah. So it was all like, you know, Super Estrella yeah. and like all those radio stations and then us, like this indie rock, like is that, in the middle. And who'd so, you get, who'd you get your tips from? Like, how did you find these places? Like, like food? That? Oh, you're talking about, in, you're talking about yeah, in New York? Yeah, in New York. In New York, um, I just walked around. It was awesome. It felt like, I felt like a beat reporter for a newspaper. Like, I just walked around and looked. Like, looked down alleys, looked for signs, like, always looking for places. What was the worst place you ate? Oh, my God. Well, you might, <laughs> I think a better question is, what's the worst place I forced my wife to eat at? She <laughs> probably has a bunch of them. But, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some bad stuff. But not really. I mean, it always, you know, if it didn't look good, you just didn't okay. order. You know, like, yeah. I don't know. It. it I don't you didn't know. have that many, like, bad experiences. I don't think, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I've blocked them out of my mind. You just love food that much. But no, that's the thing is that, you know, food blogging, by the time I moved here to L.A. in 2010, mm -hmm. food blogging had become this thing. It was already a thing. It was a thing that, like, there were food bloggers, yeah. right? And you either did recipes or you were a restaurant blogger and you would, like go and get like free food from restaurants and then you'd write your opinions that's definitely about what a lot of people try restaurant. to do and, and it was sort of like you know sort of grew as Yelp grew you know when I was doing this Yelp sort of existed in New York but it wasn't a big deal and so I really was way more like a, like a reporter like a newspaper reporter who it was less about my personal opinions about these restaurants that maybe you've heard of or not and more like oh i found this little place okay so it's and more like here's here's what's on the menu yeah and i like this and i didn't like this but if you're into this kind of thing you might like this or you might like that like it wasn't as it was more of an exploring wanderlust kind and, of thing and the people who read the blog were not food fanatics they weren't other food bloggers they were people who worked in midtown everybody mm. who worked in midtown needed this so it was like a service yeah. and it felt good to like to do that service for people and it wasn't like Midtown is home to like I really got I got so lucky like Midtown is home 
to all of the big media companies in this country. Like, you know, there were like lawyers and bankers. And then you think about all the media like Condé Nast, mm -hmm. you know, Food and Wine Magazine's offices were in Midtown. Uh, New York Times is in Midtown. So all these people who worked for these companies all read my blog to find lunch. <laughs> and so I got to meet and become friendly with all of these people that I had, people, no, I had no business being friends with. Would people hit you up just to go to lunch with you? Not, I mean, I did that a couple times. Like there were definitely some people that I got to eat lunch with um, that I was like, oh my, like this is like, um, <laughs> like um, uh, Mark Bittman. Yeah. who has written all those cookbooks. The New York Times writer, like, one day was like, you know, hey, man, you want to grab some lunch near the New York Times offices? And I was like, <laughs> yes! Like, are you kidding? Like, this is the coolest thing ever. Um, he didn't call... He never even <laughs> me never a second time. I don't know. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, I, I definitely... You know, and then it got to a point where I had enough people reading it, and I, you know, that it became a career. Like, I could actually turn it into a real career. And so I quit my job in radio. And then you'd focus just on the To do the blog full-time. And that's why I say, you know, I wrote for, I mean, I did Midtown Lunch. It was every day blog. And then when I quit my job, I would do two, three, four posts mm -hmm. a day. Because I could do a post in the morning that was like, here's where I ate lunch. Yeah. You should eat here. Like a review kind of thing. But then at noon, I'd go out and I'd see something. And I'd take a photo of it and be like, check out this thing that I just saw <laughs> while walking around. And then Pre-Instagram. Huh? This was pre-Instagram. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, um, and so it turned into a big. It turned into a thing that I could do as a job. So even though I was writing, I'm not a journalist. I didn't have any training in writing or journalism. Yeah. So I never felt like I was a real. So what you're writer. saying is that you're the you're the you're the original influencer. <sighs> I mean, that's it. God, influencer. Like, <laughs> but that's that's the other thing. Like influencers. Like you know. Like who the hell are people influencing these days? You know what I mean? You were influencing like, people. No, 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 but that's but that's what I'm saying. The yeah. word influencer, like I don't even know what that means, right? Like people have these followers on Instagram and like, you know, what does that actually mean? Like if you I follow a ton of people, you follow a ton of people. How many of them do you actually trust? And when you see some of these people and they're posting about things, right? Do you trust them? Do you actually trust them, like your friends or whoever? Or are you like, oh, did you get that for free? Like, I is think it it's aspirational? More, it's more about like, where the eyes the... are. It's just like, from the point of view of uh, like advertising and stuff, right? It's like, where are the eyes? Because it's the same thing you could say about a magazine. You open up a magazine, do you trust that magazine? You know that person paid to put their ad there. But it's about seeing it. That's, sure. what, that's, no, that's, no, no. that's how that's, I and listen, see that it. Is, but that's the thing is that I don't, I, I don't see myself I don't see what I was doing as being an influencer. I see it as being of service, a service, like yeah. a journal. Like, I, I mean, I hate to say it, it, it felt more like old school journal. It felt like being a beat reporter yeah. that I had this beat that nobody else cared about. Um, no, you know, no, like Eater didn't really care because Eater existed at the time. They didn't really care that much. What was Eater writing about? Eater was writing about New York in general. Midtown is a food desert. Ah, okay, it's not got that, it. you know, unless you work there, you know, Eater would write about it a little bit and they would link to my articles. And they'd all be like, the time. hey, look what we found that. <laughs> no, no, no. At the time, Eater was, and they, they still are. Cheers. Eater actually, oh, yeah, we're going to. Oh, is this where I admit that? <laughs> the admission? That I, that I. Don't love micheladas. But you don't like beer in general. Well, it's not that I don't like it. I never say I don't like anything. I like everything. Like, I think there's, you know, like, I mean, I, there are beers I like, but it's not my favorite. Yeah. And if mm. I had a choice of liquor, beer, like, if I had a choice of booze, it'd be liquor, wine, beer would be last. Totally fine. I, um, you know, I tell everybody, you don't have to love it. You just have to try it. Well, that's, and that's always my sell. Oh, <laughs> God. Why did you have me on this show? Everyone who watches this is going to be like, why did you have this idiot on? Can't even drink a Michelin without looking like a, like a wuss. What don't you like about it? I don't have any context for it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all. Like, I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up with this combination of flavors. Yeah. You know? And... That's why I say, like, I want to like this, you know, and I, and I keep pushing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not, I will, I will try it. I will keep drinking it. The first thing is the rim, right? Mm -hmm. Like the rim is such a, it's salty, it's sour, yeah. like, and I don't love like even like, 
margaritas. Like, <laughs> like that's like the the most American version of, it. of the. It's like the gateway for like white people into me like Mexican <laughs> drinks, right? Yeah. Like that's it's like oh margaritas we can handle. I mean, you grew up with Cuban food, which is Hispanic, so people assume that it's similar, but no, it's not it's at nothing, all. No, not, it's not Cuban all. food is and I mean, if anything, you people are really racist against Cuban food, which makes me all. Always I've never said anything bad about it. I just said it's very different. No, but I'm saying I've heard a lot of negative things in LA said about Cuban food, but like that it's bland and boring and it's whatever, different. and it's it's different, right? And so growing, and it's also also of the of the country. I mean, it's a communist country. The resources. Well, a, well, the only thing I grew I did grow up in Miami, so I grew up with. Miami Cuban food, but it and comes from that. Sure, but it, I don't. Th but communism didn't have an effect on, like it might have an effect on what restaurants are like in Cuba now, but it doesn't have an effect on the restaurants in Miami. No, so but, like, but, you but, know but, what I mean? but like, like for uh, example, British food, right? Like yeah. people always complain about British food, but it's more about the post World War II when the rations, right, and, right, like and yeah. that British food, and that's well, kind of similar yeah. what I've heard from Cubans talk about when the Cuban food. Because I've heard Cubans yeah, talk about be. Cuban food, and it's like, well, you have to understand that, like, rationalization well, of saying, food, if you're saying that a million, If you're saying that a million chilies, a million different kinds of chilies don't grow in Cuba, yes, that is true. Like, they don't, right. I mean, that's, it's it's a function of the produce exactly. and, and, you know, what you have available to you. Um, and, you know, Cuban food is much more like Dominican food. Mm -hmm. It even is more similar to Haitian food than it is but to it's Mexican very good. food. Um, it's like Caribbean. It's more like Caribbean. Yeah, it's Caribbean. Food. It is Caribbean food, and um, and so I love Caribbean. I love that kind of food. Yeah. Um, combining all those flavors together makes sense to me. Onions, garlic, sweetness from the ripe plantains, sourness from the lime juice, all that together with like some sort of fatty meat, rice and beans. That combo of flavors I freaking love. Like I love that. Right. Once you start adding chilies mm -hmm. to things you know once you start to that is such a different flavor profile yeah. right and even within chilies it just i mean yeah. you think about salsas and all that stuff i don't have dry right, fresh dried toasted fresh, toasted i mean the s smokiness is the big that's the thing that smokiness is my last like of all the flavors, you know, that's your least. That is my. It's my least favorite. Yeah. You know, obviously I love barbecue. Yes, yeah, so that's like, what I'm I like asking smoky, about. Right, like I like. You know, it's not that I. You know, I'll, I don't hate scotch. I don't hate mezcal. You know, but they're not oh, your go-to. But they're they. I have not graduated to those things yet. I feel like I'm working my way up to. You know, and I feel like I've learned a lot living here, and I'm. You know where I can appreciate things, and this I just haven't gotten here yeah. yet, right? And bloody, you know, bloody marys are not my favorite thing, but I do feel like in a lot of ways, bloody marys are a good gateway to this. They're a good gateway. Um, it's always a, I always describe it as somewhat, but I'm always very. It's different. I'm very yeah. I'm always very much like, but it's not the same thing. But here's the thing: bloody marys I hated as a kid. Now, if I drink a bloody mary, I kind of like it, but it's because. I like shrimp cocktail. See, I still don't like Bloody Marys Wait, that much. But, but I like shrimp cocktail. Yeah. Like shrimp cocktail is a thing that I like. And I like oysters with cocktail sauce. And I like cocktail sauce because I like horseradish. Yeah. And the older I get, the more I love horseradish. It started that I liked cocktail sauce, but the more cocktail sauce you eat, the more you grow <laughs> to like horseradish. And then when you actually make your own cocktail sauce, you start adding more horseradish than ketchup. <laughs> and you you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's a it's a it's a progression. Yeah, it's and an evolution. To, right, and so now I get to a place where I try Bloody Mary, and I'm like, ooh, this is like a shrimp cocktail, yeah. but with, with, with liquor. <laughs> yeah, right. And so I don't love them, but I at least like them and can appreciate them a little yeah. more. But I, you know, it's like a, and that's with this, right? Like I have, and I will tell you where it has started with me, is um, watermelon gummies covered in chili lime. From, uh, that is, uh, <laughs> that's uh, from, what, what's the, the booth called? I don't. Oh, you mean uh, at Smorgasburg? Well, they do those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is uh, Lula's good? Lula's. Yeah, at Smorgasburg, they do the, a version of that. But I'm talking about even just the, just the crappy candy. Oh, okay, the candy uh, yeah. packaged yeah. Uh, the watermelon ropes that are ah. covered in uh, <laughs> that are covered in yeah, uh, chili like and sprinkles lime. and stuff. Yeah, and my kids are actually the same way. They, um, you know. They, well, because they grew up with whatever you guys eat. Well, they, but here's the thing that, but they grew up here. So they're growing up with way more access to, obviously, to Mexican food than mm -hmm. I did when I grew up. And so the funny thing about my kids is, is that 
you know, my son is definitely more of a is a Southern California boy, mm -hmm. and so he there's hot sauce everywhere, and so he's like kind of dabbled with the hot sauce a little bit, which is something that yeah it makes sense. Like, and he does more than you. Way certainly more than me as a kid. Yeah. I think we're on the same level at this point. Him as a ten year old, <laughs> and me as a you know. And I've started. You know, I like it. I don't love it. I'm still not one of those like. You know, yeah, I'm but still you're true yourself. Like, you know, you're true yourself and you're authentic. You don't lie about kids, things. But my kids have been introduced to it a little earlier than I did, and they don't, they don't, lo they like it, but mm -hmm. they don't love it. I think they think it's, you know. But then I brought home Lula's goodies, mm -hmm. which is this candy, and it's really funny, like. And maybe you do realize that that was probably your gateway as a kid, and it's what all kids' gateway is: is that kids love candy, they yeah. love sugar. You give them candy with spiciness on it and smoky spiciness saltiness you know lime you yeah. know that flavor my kids put that on their mouth and they're like no <laughs> ew, it's spicy it's spite i don't uh, but i like it i like it i like it because they want to eat candy yeah. they want to eat candy yeah. and they'll tolerate it just because you're letting them eat candy and you put and that's like but that's what we grew up with that, i mean i, remember, I grew up I'm with like saying, lucas like, and all that candy that's what i'm saying is that you and you probably don't even realize that that's like a lot a of kid, people that's when, your gateway a lot of people who aren't familiar with micheladas they'll go to the bar and, and then say like someone who's heard of micheladas goes to someone who definitely hasn't they're like it's like with beer with like mexican candy yeah yeah well listen i like i mean you know tamarind is another yeah. you know thing that it you know, but did you, I, did I you, love tamarind. Okay. Well, I love, I mean, I love, tamarind's the main flavor in, tamarind juice is what makes pad thai, mm -hmm. pad thai, like yeah. thai food. So I love that. And then I love, like, I like aguas frescas, you know, yeah. like I like, um, Tamarindo. Uh, yeah, like, Jamaica. A Jamaica, right. And so I've, you know, but those flavors are also prevalent. I think there's in like Cuban food and stuff like that, right? Uh, no? Tamarind, no. It's Not more, tamarind, it's but Jamaica. Like, like Agua de Jamaica. Uh, no? I mean, maybe you see it now when you go to like a Hugo place, yeah. but no it's not i mean you definitely see that stuff now but it's more um it's more mango coconut um like pina colada pineapple coconut um, you see that i grew up with that way more than tamarind hmm. um, well that was your first controversial view <laughs> let's move on to more controversial questions i'll drink more i'll drink more with you and the, the mango beer you love. i do like that mango beer yeah. especially on sundays it's yeah. Morgansburg when it's hot it's hot as hell and yeah no. First question, your favorite hamburger in LA? Well, not the favorite hamburger, but I've always told you that one of my favorite hamburgers is uh, Apple Pen. Oh, and you don't even like Apple Pen. It's not that, listen, I love Apple Pen. Yeah. It's an amazing place, and their, and their pie is amazing. Their pie is amazing. But that burger is... Really? It's just not... It's not good. What's your go-to? It's objectively not good. I don't say I, don't, I just, I feel like it's one of the best in LA. But what's your what's your criteria? I don't now, know. Wait, wait. It can be your favorite. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like that's personal. Well, preference. I guess I guess yeah. It's my personal favorite. preference yeah. is is a different. I have my personal preference, but if you're talking about the best, right? So how do you, how do you best, differentiate? Well, here's the thing. How do you so, define the best versus personal favorite? Okay, so for me, um, you 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 define it however you want to define mm -hmm. it. If you're going to declare something the best, you have to be able to explain why it's the best. Mm -hmm. Like, besides, I just like it the yeah. most. Like, because then you're talking about... Personal so for preference. me, the reason that I say that Apple Pan is terrible mm -hmm. is that if you were to give me a plain burger and a bun from Apple Pan, mm -hmm. and I was to hand that to you, without telling you where it was from and you took a bite, I don't think you'd be like, this is delicious. I think you'd be like, this is like a burger. Well, that's all, yeah, this is like a pre, like if, you know, they get the patties pre-made from some distributor, probably frozen. Like they're not grinding the meat themselves. So like, so I like they're, the, the what's the hickory burger, but you also think okay, that so, you shouldn't judge okay, on that, right? So you love, so if you love hickory sauce, mm -hmm. which I'm pretty sure is a, is like Hunt's barbecue sauce or something. It's like, <laughs> they don't make that barbecue sauce, right? They buy it know, at the yeah. store. And you can love that barbecue sauce, right? Um, but that doesn't make it the best burger in the city because they're not actually, like, if you grew up loving that thing, mm -hmm. 
and you love it and you love that flavor, that's fine. But I don't, I just, I, I don't, yeah. I, you don't feel like they put enough work into it? Or? I just think that, I just think that if you take away all the stuff, the flavors that make you like it. Now, <laughs> oh, I, yes, if you take away the flavors that you no, don't like. No, what I'm saying is, okay, so you ask like what my, if I am craving a hamburger. Yeah, where do you go for a hamburger? If I'm craving a hamburger, more often than not, I will get Shake Shack. Shake Shack. Which is a New York thing, and it's controversial. And but you'll t- but you talk about like the manufactured re- patty but here's and the all reason. these things. Here's the reason. Shake Shack, they grind their burgers properly. Mm-hmm. Like it's a good grind, like a coarse grind. They push the patty down onto the, the plancha mm-hmm. so that it gets a crust on it. That crust is super important. It's part of what makes a hamburger delicious. Now, that's a griddled hamburger. A grilled burger is a different mm-hmm. thing, right? And that's a different, there you're looking for char lines, you're looking for smokiness. Like if you're doing something in your backyard on charcoal on yeah. a grill, that's a different, whatever we're talking about griddled, but now you can argue about which one you like better, griddled or grilled. I personally, I think I like griddled because griddled, you get more of the surface area, gets that crispiness from being- As opposed to just right. the lines. But if you do what in and out Burger does, which is griddle your burgers quickly on a thing filled with oil, you don't get that crust. They end up getting kind of steam grilled and that is not a great way, that's not the best way to cook a burger. Now, once you add- But, this, now, but now again, I feel like that's a preference as well, no? Well, it, like I said, that you can argue that. Yeah. But I, what I think is that if I, and Shake Shack should not be compared to Apple Pan because yeah. it's two different things, kind of. But I do think you can compare Shake Shack to In-N-Out Burger. Mm-hmm. And if I was to hand you a burger patty with just the meat and the bread from Shake Shack and from In-N-Out, and I gave you the two and said, which one of these do you like better? I guarantee that you would pick the Shake Shack one. I gotta try. I over, tried Shake Shack and I wasn't very... Just plain. Yeah. No, no, but here's the other thing, is that a lot of times you get hype. Yeah. Like, you hear that Shake Shack's the best thing. I went to, the first time I went to Shake Shack, I was like, what's the big deal? <laughs> it's just a fucking burger. Yeah. Who cares? But once you eat it 10, 20 times, you start to realize what little things about it make it perfect. Just like in and out it doesn't matter what you think of In-N-Out Burger the first time you eat it. You grow up eating it. You love it. You love it for what it is. Shake Shack is the same way. You have to, you know, like once you get used to what it is, you crave that actual thing. You know, mm-hmm. like you you want that thing that you've eaten so many times. You kind of like idealize if, if you, it. If somebody tells you that In-N-Out Burger is the greatest burger place in the world, well, everybody does, and you had never been there before in your life, and you went there as a thirty-year-old, you'd be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, like. No, that's not. The, I love In-N-Out Burger. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I think Shake Shack's better. I think that Shake Shack. Now you can like In-N-Out Burger better, but if you look at the components that make up a hamburger, I think that one is clearly better than the other. Unless you like iceberg lettuce more than, you know, hamburgers. Because if you like iceberg lettuce and tomato and the special sauce, well, then we're not talking about hamburgers anymore. We're talking about an in and out burger and you can like that better than so, a Shake Shack. But if you're going to talk about hamburgers, the best hamburger in the world should not be the one that has more lettuce than meat. So you, you were saying if you, your argument is more about the comparison, the way people compare. I just think that, listen, in and out Shake Shack, right? Mm-hmm. The bun is a Martin's potato roll, which is the best bu- hamburger <laughs> bun you could possibly have. The meat is charred and it's salted properly. It has salt and flavor so that if you just eat the patty alone, it is still delicious. The cheese is a better quality of cheese than you get it in an out burger. And the lettuce and tomato that they put on a Shake Shack burger is a higher quality and it has, it doesn't mask the flavor of the meat. It doesn't take away from, what's great about an In-N-Out burger, which I love, is that I want to eat an out burger when I'm like driving to Palm Springs and it's a hundred degrees <laughs> and you pull over and you get this burger that's like half salad, half hamburger. And that's why I think a lot of, I think that's why in and out burger has become so popular among so many. It's like uh, good road food. So many white rich people, you know, like in and out burger is very cheap and 
it is way better than McDonald's or Burger King. So if you're talking about like, if you're talking about most people in Los Angeles, it's no surprise that In-N-Out Burger is popular. But if you're going to talk about the media, you know, mm -hmm. and the people culturally, why In-N-Out Burger, why it is that, you know, collectively worse. Yes. Because the meat is ground in gigantic quantities through a grinder to just be made so that these patties can be, it's just cheap. Like mm -hmm. it is made to be cheap yeah, and yeah. fast. And so I do think, and I think in a lot of ways, In-N-Out and Apple Pan, they have shortcuts among those things mm -hmm. that get hidden. They get hidden in beneath- In-N-Out Shake Shack, you said? No, no, uh, In-N-Out and Apple Pan. Apple Pan. Have shortcuts that they have made uh, over the years. And you don't think Shake Shack does? Well, more, not, not yet. Certainly not enough to put really? them- Really? You know, and, and what I'm talking about is the fact that, um, the fact that Apple Pan is probably getting their, their patties, you know, pre-made from somewhere like, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and in an out burger, there it's like the French fries. Like there's no arguing that their French fries are objectively better than any French fries. They're made improperly. I they're don't... not made properly. You can like them. Yeah, you can like them. The reason they're made that way is because in and out is so popular and has so many people. It takes so long that they don't fry the fries twice because they don't have time. They don't have time. It's enough that they use fresh potatoes. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the great part about it. Mm -hmm. But they don't make them properly because it would take too much time. You'd have to wait longer, cost more money. They're good enough. And it hasn't stopped them from making money, so they keep making it. <laughs> and that's fine. And I don't mind In-N-Out fries. And I think some people have grown to love them as yeah. In-N-Out fries, yeah. which is perfectly fine. But there's no arguing. If you argue that In-N-Out is the best fries in the city, like, I don't know if I trust your opinion because you're not talking about the actual best. Mm -hmm. You're talking about what oh, yeah, you yeah. like. Yeah, I, I think my, my argument more is like, uh, I don't know. I generally, I think when we, every time we talk about it, I don't know if I bring it up. I just, I generally, I think after a certain point, everything's equally good, right? Like it's, for me, it's very hard to be like, Apple Pan is better than In-N-Out because they're like two completely different burgers. Well, Apple Pan, styles. I agree. Apple Pan and In-N-Out are completely different. Or even Shake Shack and In-N-Out. Shake Shack and In-N-Out. All of them. Well, I mean, if you put Shake Shack's Double Double up against In-N-Out Double Double, they actually look way more similar than you think. Maybe at that point. Like, but they, even, but they, even they, then they it's... They are the same business. But even then it's more about like your it's personal the, preference. It's the same business. Well, I yeah, I, no, of course. Like, And yeah. like I said, I love both of them. I just, you know... Now, Tito's is a different thing. Yeah, Tito's. Tito's. You love Tito's. I love Tito's. Yeah. It's amazing. So do we. I mean, my sisters love Tito's. Listen, Tito's is... Tito's is the best version of Tito's that there is. Yeah, but how many other versions... How many other people are making Tito's? Don't know. Yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Tito's is the best version of Tito's. Like... Yeah, it is. I mean, it is... There is no better version of Tito's. Now, if you don't like hard shell tacos <laughs> with like iceberg lettuce and yellow cheese on them and, and red sauce now but that's the thing with in and out and shake shack um in and out and shake shack are so similar that i feel like i would rather have unless i'm in the mood for in and out like they're you know so similar but tito's you can't compare tito i've heard people say like tito's isn't real mexican food and you're like, like yeah, i know <laughs> you'd rather have tito's like tito's is nowhere near as good as like carnitas el momo yeah. or mariscos jalisco and it's like well yeah. duh like, but that's <laughs> it's a, a different conversation it's a different it's a different kind of food entirely yeah. like to me it's more offensive to compare tito's to mariscos jalisco well maybe like carnitas el momo like or any other like regional yeah, like Leos. like taco like taco in the city um because you're comparing two things that might as well be from two different countries they are it's literally from two different countries yeah. like you know and then even within mexico you're talking about a, a million different cities and countries and places that do different kinds of tacos tito's is a Culver City taco. <laughs> it is an authentic Culver City taco through and through, and it is made better than any version of that taco that I've ever had. Yeah. Um, they fry that taco fresh, like with meat that they made in that place. Like, 
when I was first taken to Tito's, I was taken by a friend of mine uh, who lived here, and I had I didn't live here. That's yet. a great story. That's funny because he he told you it was like the best deli. Talk he was like my f best friend from college. Yeah. I love him to death. He lives in Culver City. Uh, I also trust him on food too. Like. Um, you know, uh, and he was like, I'm going to take you to the best taco in LA. <laughs> and I was like, great. And he took me to Tito's. And I was like, what is this shit? Like, what did you take me to? Like, this is, I want real tacos. Yeah. Like, I'm moving here from New York. I don't want mom's taco night what year was bullshit. This? 2010. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't want, like, I want, like, you know. And so I was really mad. And then we moved to Culver. We ended up moving to Culver City, you know, partly to be close to him and like. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Tito's. <laughs> well, no, I didn't like it. I hated it. I hated it. Just like a lot of people yeah. feel about it. I felt the same way. And then I live in Culver City, so it's right down the street from me. And you know, my wife likes it because she grew up eating that kind of taco and like it had nostalgia for her. Yeah. And my kids love it because there's nothing not to like about it. Yeah. It's you know it's easy to love. hard shells, it's crunchy, fried, like, you know, um there's nothing offensive about uh iceberg lettuce and Amer yellow cheese bright yellow <laughs> cheese and like and it's not spicy really, you know, the salsa is not spicy. Uh, I mean, it's just it's li it's it's just tomatoes. I think I literally think it's just shitty tomatoes ground up, and that's their salsa. Um, and so we kept going because my kids liked it, my wife liked it. So I went a second, third time, like, and then I realized, like, wait a second, this isn't like hamburger meat. Like, it's not ground up hamburger meat. Like, I didn't really think about it the first time I yeah. went. I just saw this thing and made this assumption that I was eating crap, like something inauthentic. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, wait, this isn't hamburger meat. And I was like, and this isn't a taco, this isn't like Ortega taco shell. Like this isn't like some, you know, Taco Bell or Del Taco or, you know, they're actually taking a corn tortilla, folding it over meat and dropping it into a fryer to fr like a taco dorado. Mm -hmm. Like it actually is more like Marisco's Jalisco than, you know, people give it credit for. Like, and, you know, and then they open it up and they, you know, put the iceberg lettuce and that <laughs> cheese. And, and then you get the, you know, you order the guacamole and it's not guacamole. It's yeah. like water. It's like liquid avocado. It's a little spicy, but not really. And, you know, it's just like, this is not guacamole. This is gross. And the salsa is boring. And, but you eat it. You dip the taco in there and you eat it. And then by like the sixth or seventh time, I'm like, you know what? This is pretty fucking good. <laughs> like, you, if you dip it all together, you eat it all together, you start to get used to it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the nostalgia thing, right? That's the the more you eat it, the more you crave that thing. The more you eat in an out burger, the more you crave in an out burger. You love it yeah. because that's the thing that you want, right? And that's how you define. And that's how you define the thing. The thing, or right. the best of the thing, it, right? In and out, right? And so, which goes back to my argument. Well, and, that's, <laughs> and I will say that, like, my feelings on Tito's have made me question my feelings on Apple Pan because I feel like is there a difference between Apple Pan and Tito's? Now, my argument is, is that Tito's is. Tito's actually serves way more people than Apple Pan. Yeah, oh yeah. Way more. But it's a different business model. And there are so many great burgers in this city, amazing burgers, that unless I want pie and amazing atmosphere, I don't need to eat that burger. Whereas there are no amazing hard shell American taco, like um, hard shell Mexican American tacos with that with lettuce and cheese. cheese. There aren't a million kinds of that. You can go to Jack in a Box. And but there, but Tito's is way better yeah. than that. Way better. Like and that's the thing. That so to me, that's why I defend. I will defend Tito's to my death. Well, so your friend took you to regional. Come at me. Regional tacos. He just didn't specify which region. It well, Culver City. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's. I mean. Yeah. All right. Last controversial question. What's your favorite smorgasburg stand? Oh, no. <laughs> no, actually, I have a question about smorgasburg. What did you eat this Sunday? What did I eat this past Sunday? Yeah. What did I eat this past Sunday? I don't remember. I have to open up my phone. Yeah. <laughs> I see I get the my picture? phone out and look at the what's pictures? Your, what's your Instagram? 
Huh? At Midtown Lunch. Midtown Lunch LA. LA. Everybody can follow you and see what 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 is it Sunday after Sunday. Tell me about your smorgasbord hacks. Oh, smorgasbord hacks. Well, you know, we're there every week. Yeah, every Sunday. So it's like and I've I mean I've eaten at every vendor. Yeah. Because, you know, uh we don't like nobody get nobody vends at Smorgasburg without us <laughs> trying their food. I mean I mean, you laugh like. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am a fat guy who likes to eat. <laughs> like, no, I will. But, side side note, I think Smorgasburg is so great because you curate the food so well. Well, we do. I mean, that's part of. It's not, but it's not even like it's not my personal preferences. I no, feel no, like, but but it's like. But we we don't like just being Instagrammable is not enough, yeah. right? Like we have to try your food. We we meet every vendor too. Like we have conversations with people, see like what they want to get out of Smorgasburg, why they want to be there, what their expectations are. Like expectations are such a huge thing, you know? Like you meet someone and they're like, well, I would expect to serve, you know, 600 people every Sunday. And you're like, all right, let's, you know, let's not, like, let's talk about this. Like, can you even make food for 600 people? Like we're open for six hours yeah. and you're not going to sell any hamburgers between 10 and 11 and you're probably not going to sell very many burgers between three and four unless you have a constant line which is very few of our vendors you know have line from the minute they open till the end so if you have four hours to sell and you want to sell 600 that's 150 burgers an hour that's more than two burgers every minute including taking people's money mm -hmm. and giving them the food and cooking and all you know can you even do that and yeah. a lot of people don't think about that like and so we meet with everybody we go through all that stuff and so but anyway, so we've eaten all the food. Yeah. We're there every Sunday. So now I've gotten to the habit of like taking food from two different vendors and just, just putting it together, smashing it together in like a hack. Because the food, because a lot of the food goes really good together. Yeah. Uh, like so, you know, the lobster burrito. Well, that that was to me. That's like, I mean. Is that is that your favorite? I mean, so people far? throw around the word genius. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, no, if it, I, so I am, we've talked, I mean, I am in love with Baja. Like, yeah. I love Baja. I love Ensenada. I love Valle de Guadalupe. Like, we've spent a little bit of time down there, me and my family, like, the past couple years. And um, Puerto Vallarta is this town on your way to Ensenada that's, um, it's very touristy. And I think there's, there's other towns where you can get better versions or whatever, <laughs> but it's a very touristy place where you get these lobsters um, these grilled lobsters uh, with flour tortillas and beans and you get the grilled lobsters and you basically take them and you put them in these handmade flour tortillas that they're making fresh like on site and you put, put some beans on top and a little salsa and you wrap it up and it's delicious and you're by the ocean yeah. and it's amazing and so we have grilled lobsters yeah, grilled, uh, amazing grilled lobster. from Lobster Damas and we have burritos la palma which makes arguably the best flour tortilla in all of los angeles if not beyond and they well, also it's definitely like up there with uh, sonora town makes that so no sonora that's why i said arguably yeah. right like sonora, sonora town is amazing burritos la palma is amazing like um and so i was like oh i could take a burritos la palma bean and cheese burrito which already has the beans in there you open it up, you just take a lob lobster tail from Lobster Damas and shove it in there and roll it up. You got Puerto Vallarta <laughs> on Sundays at Smorgasburg. Super easy. Yeah. And, and it's very good. Very, very good. Delicious. Delicious. That's why I say, like, it's not like... That one I love. That one I love because I feel like there's history there. There's a story. Yeah. You're actually... You're actually taking two great things from two of our vendors and turning it into something that exists and that I've had before in a specific place and you know like yeah. that and so it feels what's the what just the, feels right what's the best way to do smorgasburg getting excited <laughs> for this sunday you're like oh no i'm just uh, talking about shoving lobster <laughs> and palma together uh what did you ask what's your what's your recommendation how to do smorgasburg i have i always have my recommendation of people how to like do smorgasburg well, what do you what do you i tell about? people get a big group mm -hmm. get there early get there at door opening because there's no lines. Yeah. Everybody buys something different. Then you meet at the beer garden, get a table, 
and you share everything. And that way tell, everybody... Tell me more about the beer garden. Well, the beer garden, you know, they sell these great micheladas there. And they have these great beers. What's a michelada? Sounds terrible. It's actually good. You should try it. It's a spicy <laughs> beer cocktail. It's similar to a, a beer Bloody Mary, but... I will say, more I'm, than en just tomato. I'm enjoying this. It's good. I mean, like, I do like the mango beer that helps. It helps cut the... Yeah. Like, the sweetness helps cut the, like, savoriness. Yeah. And then which Michelada mix is this? Is this is a red one. This, it, is a, this is the same one we use. Now, the red one, you actually described the red one to people as being more accessible, less yeah. challenging. The green bottle... The green bottle is the original bottle. That's the one we make at Galaguetza. Okay. And it's more savory. It's the way you'd have Michelada in Oaxaca. Is that is the one that the, uh, that the recipe in Oaxaca, the cookbook... Well, the Oaxaca, uh, the cookbook... Is based on a place in Oaxaca that you guys drank at, right? Nah. Is that different than the green one? No, 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 no. It it's it's of... different. It's, okay. it's more in line with the green one. That it's more flavorful. The place you drink at is La Giralda. And I love that place. When we go to Oaxaca, I'm going to take you there and we're just going to get wasted all day there. Now, is it's, that, a, it's a okay. botanero. Say that again. A botanero. We don't have any here in LA. It's you go, you get a beer, and with every beer, you get a dish. So the first beer, they give you like one little taquito. And the second beer, you get a memela. And the third beer, you get a little soup. Fourth, so the more you drink, by the, by, you know, by the time you have five beers, you have a meal. And the area, it's good. Like the food is not, oh, you know, like back to the conversation. That's why I like the whole best. It's like just a weird thing. Like the more I think about it, but it's, it's a like it's a terrible. It's thing. a terrible way to it's talk about food. It's a terrible thing. Right. Talk, talk One about thing food. is not better than the other. Yeah, exactly. Right? You're you're you are you're so right. But like, but this After thing I, for a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, but but this thing asshole. is just so like it's so amazing in what it is, right? It's like like the tacos, like uh, the little taco, the first taco they give you is like sometimes like. A, you know when something's soaked, like like uh, fried tortillas, like soaked in salsa for too long, it gets soggy. But it's great in the way it is. Yeah. I don't know. You know, just good. I mean, it sounds awesome. Yeah. Now, if I went to that place and I got a michelada, this michelada that you love, it, it, it wouldn't taste like love. us. It wouldn't taste like no, no, either no, no. one. What I was gonna ask is, would I love that michelada and be like, oh my god, this is the gateway? Or is that like Michelada 3.0? Like I can't appreciate it until first I need to like this. And once I like this, I can graduate to the green one. And then once I like to the green one, then you can take me to Oaxaca. I think and I can drink that one and be like, now I can appreciate how great this is because I have a basis for it. I would think that particular one, I would have to have you have like five other Micheladas before you, you have to graduate to it. Well, that's right. Yeah, because that's another thing that I realize when traveling, you know, and that's why I rarely ever say I don't like something or I hate yeah. something. I was sorry, but I tried everything twice because it might have been off twice, the first time. Twice, you gotta, it's even yeah. more. Like, yeah. And I feel like that's what's great about traveling is when you go to the places where things are created, where things grew out of, there is a thing about eating I mean, it's a cliche, like, you know, Italian food tastes better in Italy or whatever. <laughs> and some of it is that, you know, the produce and the food, it's you're closer yeah. to your food, it's fresher. But I also think it's also about a time and a place and environment. Yeah. Like that kind of place that you're talking about that exists there, it exists there because... Yeah, the culture around a, it. And right. And like, and so you go there and it it's not forced. Yeah. It's not like a gimmick. And everyone it who's is, been there, who lives there, has had five other Micheladas and, around the city. And that is, that's what you do. And so, you know, and then it's like, because I've been to Ensenada, because I've had that, you know, I've eaten at Puerto Vallarta. Now I can go to Rock and Baja Lobster in San Diego and be like, oh, this, like, this, like, disgusting chain was actually based on this thing. And it reminds me of that thing. Yeah. And so I like it a little bit more just because, like, yeah, I, have you have the this, I have the and context. And then you meet like, someone who, like, gen like, genuinely loves it and you can't knock them for it, right? It's like someone who genuinely loves things that you personally don't agree with. But it, all you can do is being like, hey, let's try this other thing. What I think what bothers me is that uh, I think I think that you're told like when talking with friends yeah. or like having fun discussions, right? Yeah. Like I think saying someone that, that telling someone they're an idiot for liking something is stupid, yeah. right? Like no, like you know, saying you're wrong yeah. or that you shouldn't like this the most or whatever is idiotic. But I do think that as food writers, as influencers, as people who are pontificating, like, you know, like vomiting their opinions, like <laughs> out into the world and declaring things, whatever, which I do as well, you know, but 
if I do it, I want to be able to explain Back it up, yeah. exactly my thought process so that you can't disagree with my thought process. Mm -hmm. You can disagree with my personal preference, but you can't, you know, yeah. and to me, there's not enough of that thoughtfulness that goes into, you know, when people declare that things are great or terrible and they don't, they don't consider the fact that it might not be the thing it might be them you know yeah. like that yeah, yeah you know that you just don't have context for it so i would never i would never post on social media that micheladas are gross or i don't like michelada you know what I, it's yeah. not you know like we can joke about it that it's not my favorite thing but like i don't but to pass, put it out there but i don't pass judgment on this as being because yeah. you know i want to like this like i want to learn about it. I want to get to a place where I understand it and appreciate it. And I feel like that's the way. Well, I'm going to have to take it to Oaxaca. I'm going to have to take it to Oaxaca and we'll do the whole tour. And twist my arm. By the time you come back, you're going to be pounding these down. The 35 people watching this are like, you're going to take this asshole to Oaxaca. Yeah. Hey, listen, he there's 40 people, it. all right? Take me. Take, <laughs> the way taking this jerk. He doesn't deserve. Yeah. After we after you share this video on your social media, I'll have at least fifty. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sharing this with anybody. No one. No one that I know is no one ever can know, know about no this. No one can know about this. Well, cheers, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks and for, see you at Smorgasburg. Well, I'm gonna have it back on because I want. I want to. I wanted it to talk about what you've built Smorgasburg to become, but that'll be a whole. What we've built Smorgasburg well, to become. To be. I don't know. My English is all off right now. <laughs> right, this is my second beer today. Uh, Real quick though, it is, I think, the most successful event in LA right? on volume. I mean, we're obviously biased, but uh, obviously. yeah, I mean, we've done a really great job. You have. Congratulations. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, man. <laughs>